Rematriation in essence is happening within, it's happening within the body, which is the stand-in always for homeland. When I say rematriation as being from la matriz or the womb, there's no greater metaphor for body as home, transcendent home in this lifetime on this earth, which is to say that you rematriate wherever the heck you happen to be standing because you're going to rematriate in your body, heart, and spirit first. Saludos and welcome to the Rematriating Boriquin podcast where we discuss the journey to the essence of these islands, this archipelago and her surrounding waters, the restoration of our essence before conquests and continued colonialism, the reclamation of our collective healing and liberation. I am Yasmin Hernandez, creator of Cucubanación, artist, writer, activist, born and raised in Brooklyn, Rematriating Boriquin. Rematriation, as it connects to this archipelago, Borike. For me, is my preferred term to describe this journey, really diverse, really varied journey, vast, I should say, choosing to move from repatriation to rematriation to describe my journey. It also includes so many other experiences that are very different from my own. I personally embraced the term rematriation because within that is the word matriz, which is womb. When I arrived here, I always would say that I returned to the womb. I returned as a home birth mama and I returned as the granddaughter or a woman in a lineage of other women, my abuelas, quien fueron parteras. They were midwives, were doulas and women who assisted birth so much that this is a practice that down to my tia Aide, who lived next door to me as I grew up in Brooklyn, had as a teenager assisted birth in La Playa de Ponce. So it was something that was known, a skill that was picked up just by apprenticing, just by her accompanying her own mother and her mother's mother to these births. This lineage of my grandmother, I did not know at the time that I moved here. I later found out through the work of Melanie Maldonado, this lineage of mine hails ancestrally from Africa and arrived in Puerto Rico via St. Thomas. So when I arrived on their homeland, I knew in my bones that I had arrived at the womb. Ya yo tenía esa referencia. Ya ya ese saber vivía en mí. Just like when I chose to birth at home with a midwife in New York and everybody thought I was crazy for doing that. My body knew that that was the way that that was supposed to happen. And even though I was scared like heck to birth, period, let alone birth in that way. There was something in me and there has been something in me about knowing what must happen and knowing what this is my path, this is my journey. And sometimes, yo creo que eso solo provoca ese miedo. Like when, when we are standing before the majesty of our own path, like our own purpose and mission, it's overwhelming. And we may understand that and we may read that as a fear, as fear inducing, actually just overwhelming to stand in before the magnificence of the path carved out for our spirit by our own spirit and ancestors and divinity versus conforming to the path that the powers that be, the colonial powers that be, have set out for you and determined for you. So cuando uno se desvía and you step away from conformity and uniformity and embrace what you know to be your true path, there's something real fucking scary about that because we've already been socialized and conditioned to know that doing that comes with great risk. But our spirit knows that whatever risk, it's a necessity. And so that's why we do things that other people may think to be impossible. We do them anyway, because we're being driven by something else. We're not being driven by what society says is the sort of rubrics of success. We're being driven by our spirits and our hearts. And so that's how I arrived at coming here in 2014 with my husband and my children. And it's not until 2018 or so 
that I start to use the term rematriation instead of repatriation. At the time that I choose the term to describe my journey, and that I look it up, I don't find anything around the term in Puerto Rico. So everything that I found was connected to the indigenous communities of Turtle Island. And I just felt that rematriation was a more authentic term for me because it rooted my experience and journey in those midwife abuelas that were charged with my existence past genocide. I was my mom's last birth before her sterilization. And as so many Boricua women have faced sterilization, it's important to pay tribute to the women and the midwives who are responsible for our existence here today. For me, rematriation does that. So to say that I am on this rematriation journey is much more than to say that I moved here porque me dio la gana. No, it, it's like a spirit mission because I come from a background around Puerto Rico liberation. So I came here knowing the complexities of colonialism, imperialism, and already having this path within activism, the Puerto Rican liberation struggle. And so I wasn't ever coming here on a romance. I hadn't lived anything romantic in the States. And I knew that I was gonna come here and have to confront a lot of difficulty and hardship. And I had also heard about the experiences of what happened when the Young Lords Party, when they tried to set up shop here and with the New Rican poets when they came here. And so I didn't expect to come here and be accepted with open arms either. Aquí nunca hubo esta intención de ser bien romántica en este proceso. And if ever I've given the impression that this is a happy-go-lucky experience or that this is just all beautiful, it's because as a Gen X person, I have always had issue with posting my most vulnerable experiences on social media. Social media nunca se ha sentido como un espacio digno de recibir la jodienda y la mierda que yo he vivido en esta experiencia. Right? A lot of that hardship and trauma that we have lived here has better venues, better avenues that can hold it with integrity than social media. So rematriation, if I were to define it, is that journey to our essence, our original essence that predated conquest, colonialism, enslavement, and all the atrocities that we lived. So to think of the essence, is to think of if these lands, these islands and her surround, their surrounding waters, the natural environment untouched, unexploited, so that the bioluminescence that exists here has been here when the conquerors arrived. And that's why I turn to them for lessons because I don't wanna learn from the books of the colonizers, nor do I wanna learn from their religions. I wanna to turn to something that was here, something that is of the purest essence, something fed and sustained by these very islands and their waters. There is a whole formula that makes conditions favorable to dinoflagellates by luminescence. The waters have to be of a certain temperature, so climate change jacks up our bioluminescence. Those bays get flooded with open seawater. It cools down the temperatures, right? Those waters have to be warm enough to sustain the dinoflagellates. The manglares, the mangroves have to be, um, you know, flourishing so that their beautiful nutrient-rich roots provide the diet for those dinoflagellates. So when people come here to La Palguera and start chopping down Los Manglares to put RVs and create like these little vacation homes 
springing up on our coastlines. They're destroying our bioluminescence. And in the same way that our ancestors planted with the moon, there's certain times you need a new moon to fully appreciate that sort of um, maximum illumination of what that spark is that a dinoflagellate can give. So the irony is the darker it is, the more they light up. And what does that mean for us? As times get harder and harder, darker and darker, do we grow, do our hearts grow hard? Do our spirits go dark? Or do we find that spark and illuminate past all this bullshit, right? Because that's, that's the only way, that return to the essence, the return to the essence, the, of the original essence of these islands. And the thing is that in it, I cite my indigenous abuelas and my African abuelas because they're coming with their own indigenous wisdom from their lands. And we're still talking about people who worked in a balance and harmony with the earth, and with the natural environment, and with humanity. And that that harmony, that equilibrium supported life supported wellness, supported life and wellness, which is liberation. So this other thing imposed as the battle, as the war, as the power struggle, are constructs that are brought by the colonizer. It's not wanting to align to that, but align to this other purest essence. That to me is rematriation. Rematriation is choosing life. And choosing life is also absorbing the divine wisdom that death is part of life. And this cycle of transcending and transforming is a constant cycle versus the fear imposed by we're going to keep you unwell so that you fall ill, so that you drop dead and it's over for you. And that is the, the imposed teaching. Rematriation comes in so many dynamics because although I was born and raised in Brooklyn to parents who were born here in Bonesley, and I chose to move here when I had never previously lived here. But today I understand that rematriation are also people who have been raised here, were born here and left and came back, were born and raised here left for whatever reason and chose to come back. And I also understand that rematriation and the people who are recalibrating, reattuning to this original essence are folks who have been here all along, never left anywhere, never lived elsewhere. The ones who know the truest essence of this place and have devoted an entire life towards maintaining it, protecting it, teaching it, embodying it. That to me is rematriation. And it is a movement that is not specific to Boricua. As a fact, it's a movement that's global for all the places that humanity has been displaced from their roots, whether it be Palestine, whether it be the many indigenous communities across Turtle Island displaced, and then contained in the reservations. This is what rematriation is. It's aligning back to our roots. And also, rematriation is not a move. The move is part of that. But some indigenous folks rematriating and doing this work have always been on their original lands. Maybe they've never left those lands. But the essence of those lands was sacked, destroyed, exploited. And so the work of rematriation involves recovering our indigenous languages, our indigenous seeds and foods and customs and traditions, spiritual practices. Again, it's returning to the essence. 
And some of us have not been able to move to those original lands and may never get to because of the ways that conquest destroyed some of these lands. So for me, rematriation in essence is happening within, it's happening within the body, which is the stand-in always for homeland. When I say rematriation as being from la matriz or the womb, there's no greater metaphor for body as home, transcendent home in this lifetime on this earth, which is to say that you rematriate wherever the heck you happen to be standing because you're going to rematriate in your body, heart, and spirit first. Rematriation or tributaries, if we think of it as this huge river and all these little tributaries that run down the mountains and spread across lands. Ilonjano, Lenante de Regresar al Mar. Um, that's how I view rematriation. It's like those waters that fuel us, that one source and all the ways that water recycles, reproduces and spreads out. That's what it is to be a diaspora. That's what it is to be a people and a nation, just looking for our source. And in the end, there's that one source. All water will end up in the ocean and back in the clouds to rain back down. And so that is the most important part of rematriation is that it's not an excuse to separate and divide. To be like, tu eres de aquí, tu eres de allá. That's the binary. The binary died with the 20th century, right? Somos fluido, we're fluid. We're expansive, we're transcendent like water. That's why I always use water metaphors. For me, as an artist, my rematriation project is rooted in the Puerto Rico Trench, which is a deep sea trench and abyss in the blackness of those waters. I always come back to the water, the water of, that our ancestors navigated, the waters that hold or the, the trenches and the seabeds that hold the remains of so many ancestors stolen. But the lesson that the water teaches is that there is no binary. There is no aquí, allá. We can touch all sides at all time. There is no, I'm better than you because I live here. I'm better than you because I did the do and left and came and here I am. It's before I was here, I was there. And then there are people over time who have constantly come back and forth to the point that they don't even describe as diaspora. They just are who they are. And they just live wherever life takes them. And it doesn't diminish them of their essence so long as they are committed to it in their own bodies. There's a lot to learn in discussing rematriation because, pues, you know, dejamos llevar por el colonizador, el imperio. We're going to stamp all sorts of definitions and those definitions are going to take us down further categories that compartmentalize and divide us over and over and over and over. So my, my interest in the trench, my interest in el charco y este espacio entre medio, verdad que toca todos lados a la vez simultáneamente. It's like you have this water touching all sides at the same time, and it has access to the wisdom of all spaces and all experiences. The water as totality. The water holds the remains of our ancestors these roadmaps to liberation that went down when they jumped from the fucking ship or when the whole ship went down. Those waters hold the totality that is real. How do we stop choosing sides and hopping back and forth and instead submerge ourselves in that totality, in that wisdom, that ancestral wisdom, where all these people traveled, where people perished, where people still choose to return for solace. What is there to be taken that's not just an ending, but a beginning? How do we alchemize and reclaim, reclaim and alchemize all that sorrow and suffering and turn it into a healing and liberating today? My interest, Puerto Rico collectively, this archipelago identity that's so much more expensive que la isla, like, o oh, la islita, que no es una islita, porque esto aquí es grande, 
expansivo. And if we add the other islands and if we add the waters that surround and if we add the wisdom and the identity of the whole Caribbean, we are big. <laughs> we are big where we don't have to resist becoming something else because we are so fully embodied and sure and secure in what the fuck we are. A successful colonial plan has effectively made us forget. What if equal liberation strategy is remembering, reclaiming, embodying our essence? Rematriation. Thank you for listening. You can find more at rematriatingbodygang.com and also Instagram and Facebook, Rematriating Body Gang. Stay tuned for more on the project and the portrait series. Gracias. This is Yasmin Hernandez.